Uh, hello everyone, I'm Luke Smith from the University of Iowa. I'd just like to start by thanking you guys for having us here. We came last year, it was amazing, so right away, once we heard it, we were able to sign up again. We told everyone, like, gotta go, and then we were told we could present. So, we're like, all right, we'll present. Um, what I can talk about is sustainable thinking. Um, taking it from the University of Iowa and bringing it to Ghana, where our project is located. You guys have all probably seen a uh, table or graph kind of like this that shows sustainability and it's created with society, economy, environment. When you combine all those, that's when you reach sustainability. And so I'm going to talk about how we took that into account into our project in Ghana. But first, we got to make sure that the University of Iowa's Engineers Without Borders is sustainable because we can't jump on right away and say we're going to build something in Ghana and we can't even make sure our own Engineers Without Borders program is sustainable. And we're fairly new. We're about to implement our first project this winter. And so at the first meeting we had 80 plus students. Second, third meeting we were down to like 30 or 40. So a slight drop, but trying to keep everyone involved with workshops. Um, we have students from a ton of different uh, majors and around the world. So we're also trying to incorporate like a river cleanup. Um, listening to Ghanaian music. And then we have a friend raiser that we call, which is like a fundraiser. We invite everyone that's been kind of a part of our EWB, been supporting us, family, friends, and invite them to come to an event in the spring semester. And this last year, we were able to have our in-country contact, uh, Benjamin, come actually and talk at the friend raiser, which was just amazing. He hadn't been to the US before, it was an experience for him. And there's an experience for a lot of the students because we can't have everyone just travel to Ghana right when they join. So it was a neat way for people to actually hear his stories about Ghana and let him experience the University of Iowa. So, Kobrini, Ghana, which is where our project is, is about a population of over 500 people or so. Um, the language is cheap and it's in a rural area. We have our, this is Africa, Ghana, Kobrini fairly in the middle, and we have the picture of the kids, so you guys can all do that. Um, and so it was really, when we went there, they told us, you know, they need electricity, they need the trains, and they need water. We looked around and we realized, you know, they have a couple boreholes, but people have to wait for hours. There's fights that break out occasionally, kids miss class. The trains, they have two personal trains and then a school one that's like filling up for 500 plus people and they don't have any electricity. So then if we break down the sustainability, how can we see it in the Ghana project? The society, how do we make 80 plus University of Iowa students relate to 500 Ghanaian people? It's kind of slightly different lifestyles and you have to be accepted by the community to actually if you want to implement a project. So it took a couple of trips. I mean, right away, you know, they're open to us and right away you start meeting, but you really want to connect and really understand what they want. And so you start with really connecting and getting to know the community and then asking them, what do you see as important? And then once they tell us, you know, we would like the trains, it's embarrassing to have family over and, you know, we have to tell them to go to the bathroom or, you know, our kids are missing class or they have to cross this road and it's dangerous to try and get water. And so then we take those ideas and then, you know, tell them, you know, we're capable of possibly doing this project. I don't think we're capable of, you know, setting up the whole village with electricity. Um, so we tell them what we're capable of and then we start bouncing ideas back and forth. And so we came up with a latrine, or uh, sorry, water tower design that sounds like it's an okay, they like it and everything. And so, We'll go with that. And then we also have to make sure that we have the community agreement ownership. Here's our water and sanitation group we asked them to form, make sure they had. They're in charge of taking care of boreholes. If the borehole breaks, then they go and get funding and repair it. And they're gonna take on our water tower as another project that they have to maintain throughout the year. The environment. Um, throughout all these projects that you've been hearing today, all the different environments. Ours is not the beautiful mountains and everything. Ours is just flat. It's very easy to grab the circuit. It's flat. And so if we want to create water distribution though, we have to elevate it so that future, like down the road there'll actually be some water pressure and we could distribute it a little ways. 
and so our water tower has to be elevated. Um, we want to use, we want to make sure we don't damage the surrounding areas, and so that's where you have to really figure out who owns this. Is it okay to build here? Also, along with the ownership, if it's on this land, someone is going to start claiming it's theirs. So. What's the surrounding area? And then we want to use local labor materials. That's transportation. You're bringing everything from the U.S. That's not really environmentally friendly. You have to transport all your stuff. And that goes along with trying to be sustainable. They can purchase it in country. It's going to be easier for them to sustain throughout the years. That goes to the economic part. Can they, can the University of Iowa afford making the trips, bringing the supplies that we say we'll and can they maintain the project on their half if we say they have to repair the borehole in the breaks? And so that's part of it. We have to consider if both groups can actually have the financial asset to make the project possible. Then, will this project possibly benefit the community? If it works and more kids are able to attend school more often because they don't have to wait in line for hours at the borehole, you might have an economic boom later on down the road road when you have more educated community. You also might not have to worry about the health aspects if kids are getting beaten up or if you're getting sick from any of this stuff. So in this work days. So there is economic aspect to this project. And then finally a little plug for the afternoon session. Um, we're going to be talking about the sustainability and either look at our project and see if we can rip apart this and see what it contains or look at someone else's if they want. And then we're going to show a little video because part of the social aspect is how do you really make sure that your group communicates and connects with the community that you're working in? And so sometimes you go on a site assessment and you're like, hmm, I want to fix this problem right now. I really want to do this. You can't always be like, I want to fix their water, you know, their water shortage or something and fill them a water tower right away. But you can see what's lying around and possibly come up with little creative solutions from a milk jug and possibly have it as a little water storage thing. So we're gonna just fill up some of the tables with just a plethora of random junk or objects and see if people can be creative and think outside the box. And so if you're on a site assessment, can you come up with a little method for storing their water out of a milk jug and maybe cutting it and changing up some stuff. So come to the afternoon session, we'll be doing some hands-on stuff with objects. That is all.